This, this gentleman, uh, he had called me because he had seen the video from you guys when you did the interview. Mm. And uh, he thought it was really interesting, so he wanted to meet me. He came up and uh, he wanted to sell me some coins too. So he wound up selling me, it was like 260 silver dollars. And uh, there was some better ones. There was a few Carson City pieces, and uh, but they're just all just circulated. Uh, probably bought a few whiskeys and beers every, over the years, and yeah, you know. So, so what was yeah. he kind of expecting for like this collection? Uh, was, I guess he was thinking it was going to be about three thousand dollars. Well, he didn't tell me that up front, but right. uh, but I wound up paying him seventy two hundred for the whole deal. Ah, so yeah, wasn't too bad. So where are some of the Carson cities at that you like? Uh, they you think are in here real? somewhere. <laughs> they're hanging out. Yeah, they're hanging out. Yeah, but yeah, there's a there's a bunch of uh, just there's some decent dollars. There's some you know decent quality and and uh, I mean they're all mostly common dates. There was a 1921 piece dollar, which is kind of cool, and, and there was a 1928 piece dollar that was in amongst the regular piece dollars that he wasn't expecting either. So, oh wow, yeah. So he was he was shocked at the price of that one. She beat, but she's uh, yeah. she's the key, so yeah, it doesn't matter, right? Exactly, yeah. So it, it was a great little deal. No, that's all right. Thank you find any cool graded stuff here? Yeah, I just bought a beautiful coin from the famous Sakusha people. Woo! But, yeah. It's just got to survive to the fun show, right? That's such a pretty coin, though. That's yeah. Pretty. Y'all missed out on this one. That's right. Yeah. It's on a 19, let's say there's a 1921 quarter, which is kind of cool, and a nice 29D. And yeah, let me take a look at those. Yeah, real quick. those are pretty. The 21 is really tough to find, of course. Yeah, well, with the full date, too, is very tough. Yeah, exactly. And that one's got a great date on it. Just would be great for an album, I'm sure. So. Yeah. And here's a few more pieces that I bought yesterday. So all this stuff you probably could expect to be at the fun show, I guess, right? It'll in be case at the people want to. Sure will. Yeah. And there's some just there's some, some better dates. It's just a it's just a deal that uh, somebody brought in and. He had some clean pieces, but I buy it all, so everything has value. Hey, you got to buy it when it's here, right? Yeah, you got to buy it when it's here. Sounds can't good. Let it, can't let it walk. Yeah, I appreciate you showing us, Rodney. Yeah, thank you. All right, guys, so we have a few extra moments at the TNA show, and we're going to show you guys a CAC submission that we just got back from C Stickering, and uh, we hope you guys enjoy it. So the first coin I want to show you guys from this CAC submission is this 79cc and VF25. You can see how strong the hair is above the ear and how original the coin is on both sides. It's not a cap die, it's a clean CC on the reverse. And uh, it's very original there also. Just nice even wear. And Casey said, hey, let's give it a shot at CAC. And it came back with the bean. So the second coin is this 1935 Connecticut commemorative half and 66 plus. CAC approved now. Just nice original color on both sides. Untouched and basically problem free. There's one coin roll in front of the eagle, but nice and fancy. Then we have a 89 Carson City. Um, this one we bought from a customer and we thought it was wholesome and original. You could tell by the rim that good six is a fair grade for it and CAC agreed. And there's just a little bit of wear on the rim right by United, but we didn't feel like that would hold it back. No damage at all as well. Damage is a big issue on really low ball Carson Cities. And we have this Connecticut commemorative half. I'm sorry, Arkansas commemorative half. Uh, it's a 36D. I wanted the gold sticker on it, but there was just too much going on on the face um, of the second portrait that is the high point. It's in a 2.2 gen holder. And uh, once again, just an untouched coin. Make a few bucks on it still, which is nice. Then we have one of my favorites of the submission, this 1891 Proof Liberty v -Nickel. It's got a great cameo contrast. It's Proof 63 cameo and it has a sticker now. Uh, didn't see any issues on it. Felt like the cameo was justified and so did CAC stickering. And then we have the last coin of this submission for us is this 1897 Liberty V Nickel in 64. It had a really clean cheek and uh, when you flip it over, when you take a look at the cob underneath the V, you can see that that cob is a little bit weakly struck. So it's not a gem. And there's a few little hits on the reverse, but it is a definitely a great 64. And so we did have a great CAC submission. And uh, I don't know, we're gonna take you guys along and show you guys what else we purchased at the show. And maybe take you along for some stories as well, so. So Casey's just setting us up for the last day that we're gonna be at the TNA show. 
I think we started off with like a case and a half of coins, and now we're down to a little bit less than a full case of coins. So people are very excited to buy stuff, and uh, we did buy a lot of coins that we're just going to be exclusively posting on our website at kushcollectibles.com, so you guys can see them first. So what's your favorite coin in the showcase that we have to offer people, Casey? Is this 1892 proof Barber half. It's graded proof 64 cameo. Yeah, it's just so tough in cameo, and then it's a great coin that's sticker too. Yeah. Hey, Mr. John, what do you want to show us today? Well, today I'm showing you my 1836 set. It's a set that I started about seven years ago. I've uh, been working at it. It took me five years to complete the set, and I've sold a few pieces and, and still working to get the final set out of it, but, uh, but... I guess what was your main inspiration when you were thinking about building the set? Well, I like to collect by dates on some things. Uh, 1863, because I'm from West Virginia, uh, and my wife is from Texas, so I thought I should uh, do an 18... Six, uh, 36 set, uh, which I've completed, but haven't ever completed the uh, 1863 set yet. But uh, it started out with a bust half that I bought on her birthday and uh, told a friend of mine, uh, Paris Gold and Silver, uh, James Meyer, I told him about uh, buying this coin jokingly uh, for, my, uh, for my wife for her birthday. And um, and told him that I thought that I might try to do this set. Right. And, uh, and he thought it was a great idea, and he actually did it and completed a set uh, before me, and he's got some fantastic coins. Matter of fact, this was a duplicate. Uh, the, the dime was a duplicate out of his set that I, that I bought as an upgrade uh, several years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, it's a nice-looking coin. And there's just some... Uh, there's some really uh, special pieces in here to me that I just don't know that I could ever part with, to be honest with you. Um, they'll end up getting passed down and sold off, I'm sure. And, yeah, what's kind of, uh, like if someone was starting to collect tomorrow, what would you kind of recommend for them that are starting out? Uh, as far as the 18... Either the set or maybe like a focus or what would you say like, hey, I made this mistake and maybe you should think about it before you do it or... Well, uh, the bust half is uh, probably a good example of that. This is a, the original bust half that I bought for this collection, I bought because it had an excellent strike to it. Um, the stars were struck up real nice, but it was a typical bust half. It was uh, very dark and, um, you know, I was just starting out with those and I really wasn't well versed with the bust halves um, at all. And uh, I, I bought this coin as a replacement uh, for the other coin um, because it has, it's a lower grade, but it has really nice eye appeal. And I think, for me, the most important thing with coins uh, that, that, that help me in uh, decision making for buying a coin is actually uh, to look for, get to know that series from that mint for that year, some of them come, all come weekly struck. Um, then you just try to find the best strike that you can within that year for that type of coin. Um, and then I also look for eye appeal. And, and sometimes it takes a long time, it takes patience. Um, and I've bought a lot of coins that I loved at the time, but realized that I should have uh, taken my time to look for the right point because it is out there. You just have to be patient. Uh, but I think eye appeal is very important, and I think strike and quality is very important as well. Yeah, I see you have some coins laid out kind of in the case down here. I see that you're selling some coins. If someone wanted to reach out to you, I know this set right here is not for sale, but if someone wanted to reach out to you maybe to sell some coins or buy some coins, what's a good kind of phone number for you or uh, email? Yeah, uh, well, I have it on my card right there, uh, uh, whiterockcoins at gmail.com. And uh, also phone number on there is uh, 310-503-3791. Yeah, well, I appreciate you uh, sitting down with us, John, and uh, showing us this 
awesome set. Thank, thank you, you for coming to the TNA show as well. Yeah, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, so here are a few coins that he has offered. See the duplicates. The new Pepsi, I'd like to have the old Pepsi. And I've got the set. They they came out with a set. What we got, David? No, show, show, the, show the video. Show the video. What do we got? <laughs> Go for it. Fancy, fancy 1877 Indian headset. Yep. That is a amazing coin. I don't know why David didn't buy it, but. We did. <laughs> so, yep, there it is. So we just got home from the TNA show, and we wanted to show you guys some bread and butter coins of numismatics, and we also wanted to show you some higher end stuff that we bought over the table and from different dealers. But let's show you guys these first five coins. So we have a few low ball Carson cities here. First, we're looking at the 89 CC, um, just a perfectly original AG3. CAC approved. Then we have the 78 CC, Fair 2, also CAC approved. This all came from the same collector that bought them a while ago, sent them in a CAC. Half of them stickered, half of them didn't, and these two did for them. And then we have two old green holders here. The first one is an ADS and 65 proof like. So it was towards the end of the show on, I believe, Friday. A kid came in and said, Hey, you want to buy some cool coins for me? And this was one of them. Then we have this 86O, which is extremely tough and uncirculated. It's also in that holder, like we said. And he just got that back from CAC and he offered it to us fresh. Then the last coin from this little set is this 81CC in VG8. Same collector, really beautiful coin and very tough to find um, in that low ball condition. Most of them are uncirculated. Just because there are so many different hordes out there, and uh, yeah, really neat coins. If we were to talk about the TNA show, kind of rating it on a scale of one to 10, um, if you were expecting the public to be there, the public was not there. So the Boar's floor opened up at 9 a.m. and I think 15 people came into the show. And if you were kind of looking at how many dealers were there, it was like 150, maybe 200 dealers there. And 15, 20 people coming in uh, at nine o'clock on Friday and it's kind of, you know, 30 or 40 people at nine o'clock on Saturday kind of stunk. So buying from the public was probably like, uh, maybe a one or a two out of 10, uh, dealer to dealer business was really, really good. So, you know, it was probably a six or a seven out of 10. There was a lot of dealers there that were wanting to buy and they bought, you know, I think 40 or $50,000 from us, which was incredible. And, uh, you know, on selling to the public, you couldn't really sell the public, but I guess it was mainly a dealer to dealer show. And if you were willing to set up at the show, just expect that bring a lot of great things to the show. So you can offer it to different dealers, make sure you have a good profit margin already baked into it. So you can do dealer to dealer business and you'll have a successful show. Like I said, though, if you were there expecting the public to sell to them or buy from them, you would be sadly mistaken. There was basically no one there. And uh, it's just the first year that it's been down in Conroe, the TNA show. And so we hope it changes. We hope it gets better. We hope that uh, the organization um, makes it a little bit more organized so that everybody feels like they actually spent good money on a table. You know, sometimes when you walk into a show and you're spending 500, 600, 700, a thousand dollars on the table and, you know, 30 or 40 people walk into the show when it opens, that's just disheartening. So, Let's show you guys, though, some really cool high-end stuff that we bought from different dealers. I'm sure you guys are going to love these. So here is the action-packed tray. So we bought these from a few dealers that were walking around, and we were very thankful for the deals that they gave us. And these coins are pretty cool. Just a bunch of key dates from different series, and these were my highlights of the show. So the first coin, which is a lot of guys' favorites, is this 1895 San Francisco. It's Great Men's State 63. This is the first San Francisco um, 95S that we've handled that is Mint State. And we're looking at this OGH flowing hair dollar. It is a three leaf from the reverse, as you can see. So you can see three leaves on both sides here. This one isn't the most, uh, I would say, pure and natural coin. It has some old cleaning on it. But, you know, finding a $95 in the show, someone selling it to you, 
That's an incredible feeling nonetheless. Then we have uh, this 1874 shield nickel. It's graded mint state 66. It's pretty much the highest grade that you can get for this series. And this one was offered us at a good price. Don't really handle a ton of shield nickels, but this one was certainly stellar. Then we're taking a look at this 1823 Capus Taff. It is CAC graded MS63. It is a legacy holder, so it was just PCGS CAC before someone moved it to this holder. It's got a neat doubling in front of the face, as you can see. And uh, yeah, I thought the coin was phenomenal. So our next coin here is this 1877 Indian, Mint State 62 Red Brown. People's favorites, people love uh, 77 Indians, especially with a ton of detail. This one has as much detail as you can get. And uh, we really do love that coin. And the last one from this tray is this 1855-0 gold dollar. Very tough branch mint gold dollar, and it is CAC approved. It's also in a gold embossed fatty holder. And so these coins were, like I said, we didn't expect them, but we were very happy that we got them. We did pay strong for most of these coins, but we ended up buying these coins, bringing them back to our table, or if we bought them over the table, we just put them back and we said, hey, Let's let our customers get first shot at these. So if you guys want to take a look at these coins or the Morgans or all the other new purchases that we have, make sure to visit our website, AkushaCollectibles.com. That link will be in the description below. We wanted to thank you guys for watching today's video. Did you guys enjoy the interview with John? Did you guys enjoy that little sneak peek with uh, Rodney's buy? Just let us know down below. Uh, we enjoy all the comments and we read them frequently. Make sure to subscribe. We've got videos coming out every single week and we want you guys to be a part. We will see you guys in the next video.